cake and trim off the edges. You're going to want to cut them into small pieces. Take two pieces and start rubbing them together until you get soft crumbles. Once your cake resembles soft crumbles, we're going to start to add the icing. Now you're going to want to add a little bit of icing at a time, about a tablespoon or so. If you add too much icing, your cake pops will be too sticky, and if you add not enough, they'll be too crumbly. Once you add your icing, you're going to want to start mixing it around until it resembles the texture of Play-Doh. Now that our mixture resembles Play-Doh, we're going to start to form our cake pops. So you can do so either by eyeballing it and making about golf-sized ball amounts, or we can use a tablespoon or a cookie scoop. So start to scoop a little bit up, and you're going to want to make sure you have clean hands for this part. Pop a little bit in your hand, and you're going to roll it around until it's nice and even. Then you're going to take a cookie tray with some wax paper put onto it, and you're just going to gently put it on there, and we're going to complete that for all of it. Now that we've finished forming all our cake pops, we're going to place that into the fridge for a couple hours, or if you're impatient like me, you can put it into the freezer for about 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, and as you can see, the cake balls are a little bit harder. Um, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start to insert our lollipop sticks. First, we need to melt the chocolate. Um, so you can do this by either putting it in a double boiler or placing it over boiling water, or you can just melt it in the microwave for a couple seconds. So once you've melted your chocolate and it's about a ribbon-like consistency, we're going to take one of our lollipop sticks and we're going to dip it about an inch of the way into the chocolate. Take one of your cake balls and we're just going to place it about halfway into the cake ball. And we're going to complete that step with all of them and we're going to let it sit into the fridge again for a couple hours or you can put it back into the freezer for about 15 minutes. So now that the chocolate has hardened and our lollipop stick is firmly in place, we're going to start to cover our cake pops. You're going to want to put your melted chocolate into a small narrow dish. This will ensure that the cake pop gets covered evenly. You're also going to want to use something like a box or a piece of styrofoam that you can place your cake pop in after just to ensure that it dries. What we're going to do is we're going to take our cake pop and we're going to put it straight down into the chocolate mix. Now you're going to want to slowly turn it around until it's evenly covered. And then we're going to bring it straight back up again. Now you can twirl it to get rid of the excess chocolate or you can tap it lightly on the side. And you're going to want to do this until it's evenly coated and all the excess has stripped off. Once it's done and everything looks good, then you can place it into your styrofoam block and let it uh, cool there until the chocolate hardens. So once the chocolate has hardened on your cake pop, we can start to decorate. So you can either use icing that you put in a bowl with like a toothpick, or you can get gel icing, or you can use a paintbrush. Here I'm going to use melted chocolate. So you're just going to take a little bit on your toothpick and really have fun with it. You can do whatever you'd like. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just for fun. Awesome, so there you have it. So we have a jack-o'-lantern cake pop.